Well, they support civil disobedience, and a third of them almost support violence. That's not the way to win the broad mass of the American people, and I don't think that's good political strategy. I think that's uh, committing Harry Carey. Your column in the Wall Street Journal is based on the first uh, in-depth poll of some of these demonstrators. One of your associates went out October 10th and 11th, just a couple of days ago, to speak to 200 protesters in New York Zuccotti Park. And some of this is really uh, amazing. I mean, one of the things that was striking about the Tea Party was most of the people in the Tea Party were people who hadn't been involved in politics before, right? That's correct. Here, uh, 52% say they've participated in a political movement before. And 31% say they would support violence to advance their agenda. Why? I mean, these are left-wing activists. And, Michael, you remember, because I know you were active in the late 60s and early 70s, how the Democratic Party was hamstrung by its association with those in the anti-war movement. Again, however... um, passionate they were, who engaged in uh, activities that were inimical to um, core American values. And uh, I think if the Democratic Party decides to uh, align itself fundamentally with the Occupy Wall Street movement, they will be out of step with the broad mass of the American people, particularly those in the center who want change, but they're not exactly sympathetic to uh, this crowd. I, I think your, your piece is profound and it is profoundly important. And and one of the points that, that you make is that, and you see this in polling again and again and again, Americans in the middle, uh, the people who will decide this election, the kind of people who voted for Obama in 2008 and then voted for some Republican candidate in 2010, those people want one thing above all, which is they want the people in Washington, D.C., to stop shouting at each other and to actually shake hands and get to work and make some progress for the country. Would that be an accurate summary? Absolutely. And when you're out in the streets demonstrating and you're not working to solve common problems, given our economic problems, given what uh, uh, the, the, the jobless crisis, I mean, goodness gracious, how can you say that this is what the American people want? They do want compromise. They want rational solutions to reasonable problems. They tilt center-right. I'm probably center-left still, but, but uh, bottom line, the American people say what you say, which is, goodness, get together, solve our problems and stop the fighting stop the yelling and stop the arguing yeah i mean when and and again what what people are yelling for here the only thing they seem to be able to agree on is redistribution of wealth and uh, leading a bunch of wall street bankers away in handcuffs right and while many people in the center are not sympathetic to wall street they're also not looking for radical redistribution or mass incarceration You bring up the 1970s and the 1960s, and this is one of the things, uh, Doug, uh, I I wrote about in a book a couple of years ago called Right Turns, which was the story about how I went from being a punk liberal activist to being the lovable conservative curmudgeon I am today. And part part of the process for me was seeing how badly the demonstration process, the demonstration model, worked for people on the left in the 1960s. It's one of those things where you may remember the biggest of all anti-war demonstrations, the mother of them all, was the mobilization uh, that marched on Washington in November of 1969, the first year Nixon was president. November 15th, 1969, there were over half a million people who came to Washington to see a huge march. And there were also some creeps led by Bill Ayers who uh, smashed a bunch of windows and created... After the demonstration, Nixon's popularity soared. His approval rating on the war, which had been very low, took off because people hated these demonstrators. And and you were saying a moment ago, uh, Doug, and I think this is very, very important, that the American people see these folks and they see that they're not really working for cooperation. They're not working for constructive change. They also see they're not working. These are, I, I've suggested they do a, uh, a, a reality show based on the demonstrators called American Idol, I-D-L-E. I got it. And I mean, what, what are these people, I, see, that was one of the most surprising things from your poll. It said that most of these people have jobs? 
Well, let, let's put it this way. These are people who are employed, people who have been in politics, who believe in extreme left-wing politics, and who believe in, you know, uh, violence if necessary in some cases, and civil disobedience virtually all of them. This is not how you rally America, and your, your citing of the mob in 69 is exactly right. Why shouldn't the Democrats, and why shouldn't people who thought the way you used to think and the way I continue to think, why should we shoot ourselves in the foot by associating with people whose interests, values, and politics are inimical to what we believe. That's what I asked. I, I, it's, I, it seems to me fairly obvious. Have, have you heard a response from Team Obama to your extraordinarily rational and sensible... No, they're, they're, they're not going to listen. They've thrown in, I believe, with the left. They, they think, you know, there's nothing to be gained by trying to compromise. Throw in with the left, say how wonderful these uh, folks are, and roll the dice that the Republicans end up being uh, more uh, antithetical to American values. So I don't think there's going to be any attempt at compromise. And what you said a, a minute ago, Michael, about what the American people want. I think what we're heading towards is a year of complete polarization where the 2012 election will decide all of these key issues with the caveat that we're in such bad shape now that we're going to preclude action on our key problems for a year or more because of petty political considerations. A real tragedy. So the new Gallup USA Today poll asked people who do you blame more for the poor economy? The federal government or big financial institutions? Washington or Wall Street? 30% said, uh, according to this poll, they blame Wall Street more. 64% blame the federal government more. So good luck to President Obama and Nancy Pelosi and the rest of them in their embrace of, by the way, the increasingly anti-Semitic extremism of uh, Occupy Wall Street. Seculistupidist.com, conservative.com, rightosophy.com.